Hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for you to bring you yet another episode of our FIFA 17 career mode here with Hull City and today we are right firmly into the transfer window. We're into January and of course that means we can sign and sell some players from our squad. This is always a great time of the year let's be honest. We've got quite a lot to do in this transfer window whilst also trying to make a profit really uh, when it comes to the objectives that we've been set by the board. We, need, we really need to adhere to those uh, but we do still need to strengthen quite a few areas of the squad. We'll be getting straight to that this episode. Last episode we had three games and we also did a little bit of transfer activity um, and we actually lost all three games so we need to bounce back. We need to recover because we're currently in very bad form. You can see them in the background transfer wise we've not started with very good news here either. Hen and Veen decided to reject our our latest bid sorry for Jeremiah Sanjust, uh, the, the, uh, the centre back from Holland. 73 overall 20 years of age. We make a new bid there of 2.1 million pounds plus Michael Dawson and I also decided to make a fresh bid for someone we haven't even tried to sign so far. This is Issa Diop of Toulouse, uh, who featured in one of my tips videos recently. I got a few comments actually telling me to go for this guy, so I suppose, you know, fairly understandably, given he's featured in one of my videos before. One million pound plus, uh, one million pound, sorry, plus Michael Dawson, and we'll see what Toulouse say about that. You guys, though, voting for Marvin Stefaniak as your player of the episode. It's the first time that he's ever won this award, and I'm very happy for him. You guys know my stance on Stefaniak. He's probably my favourite player in the entire squad because of his story, really. Really, he's come out of nowhere and he suddenly seems to be this, you know, this really, really good attacking positive player. You guys voting from his player of the episode in the last episode, that's, that means he will play in every single game of today's video. You can see in the background though when it comes to some more transfer activity, these are the players we are hoping to sell. Dawson is obviously usually or hopefully going to be involved in a trade deal. Uh, Milo Jakupovic and a few others also up for sale and if we buy a new goalkeeper then we'll have to obviously sell David Marshall as well because we don't have the funds uh, to just get a new goalkeeper and keep hold of Marshall we'd have to sell him because otherwise we're going to fail our objectives uh, and talking about selling players I want you guys to vote in a poll on the top right of the screen concerning Andrew Robertson who a few episodes ago dropped as the bombshell that he wanted to leave so I want you guys to vote as to whether we should try and keep hold of him and just hope that we can convince him into signing a new contract or whether we should just cash in on him now because the problem with Andrew Robertson is he wants to leave but his contract expires this season so if he if he stays but if he if we don't sell him and he decides he doesn't want to sign the contract we're going to lose him for free at the end of the season so we're either going to have to take the risk and hope that he doesn't leave for free or we can just take the more conservative option really and sell him now and cash in on him so you guys can vote on that poll in the top right of the video nevertheless we are getting into the first game of today's episode against Everton Stefaniak obviously starting the game as he was player of the episode from last time we're getting the first chance of the game Leon Bailey cutting inside from the right hand side and finding Abel Hernandez and we've scored in the blink of an eye in this game we've barely even been able to introduce the game before we put the ball in the back of the net and we're 1-0 up here against Bournemouth in this game. I am just trying to work out, did I just call them Everton? I get the feeling I just called them Everton. If I did, I really apologise and I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the blue kit. Nevertheless, Leon Bailey there finding Abel Hernandez and he uh, is an interesting finish actually, a bit of a, a sort of finesse sort of off balance but he puts it in off the post a wonderful finish and yet another goal for Abel Hernandez in this series against Bournemouth not Everton I want to clear that one up nevertheless we're going forward again in the 26 minute Livermore with a ball across the box and what a save that is from the Bournemouth goalkeeper Mateus in the, in the net, in between the sticks, Abel Hernandez surely thinking he'd scored a second, but an incredible save there down to his uh, down to his right-hand side, sorry, to deny the Uruguayan striker with one hand, and he's going to have to do some more work again here, and he does in the end, Vincent Cosiello there with the chance, but a good save from the Bournemouth goalkeeper at that tight angle. Into the 38th minute, we are bossing this game. Livermore now finding Andrew Robertson there down the left-hand side, the ball into the box, and it's headed just over the bar by Vincent Cosiello, who's jumping, seems to be very good for a very small small player on the edge of half time and Bournemouth getting their first chance to game the ball th uh, through there for Jack Wilshire but a great save from David Marshall to deny him and it stays 1-0 at half time Abel Hernandez with the goal that currently separates the two sides into the second half and Bournemouth are going forward here with Ryan Fraser and Drew Watson needs to defend he can't get there it's crossed back across the box and Lewis Cook is there he, he converts the cut back at the second opportunity does the X leads uh, midfielder it's a good save from Marshall in the first instance but he can't really get it away from danger. It comes back to Lewis Cook rather fortuitously, and he blasts the ball into the bottom corner of the net. 
So once again, we have let a lead slip in this series so far. We're going to try and get an instant response. Moses Odebarger cutting inside there from the right-hand side and finds Leon Bailey. And after just four minutes of losing the lead, we have gained it back. And the Jamaican winger, Leon Bailey, gets his goal to make it 2-1 in this game. It's another 2-1. We've had so many results of 2-1 in recent episodes. It's ridiculous. Brilliant work with Odebarger. And that is a really nice finish from Leon Bailey. Just flicking it up with one foot and then half volleying it in on the other foot. That's actually... Quite an underrated goal. It looks as if it's not that great, but I think the technique going into that was very, very good indeed. Into the 69th minute, Stefaniak with some great work, and Hernandez just can't quite get on the end of the cross, but just skipping past his man, as he seems to do so regularly, does Stefaniak. Bournemouth are going forward with a chance for Wilshire and a wonderful save from Marshall, then punched clear by the goalkeeper, the Scottish goalkeeper, out for a corner, and Bournemouth have got us under the cosh here. The corner comes in, it's headed away by Cozielo, and we're under massive amounts of pressure in this game. A spell of about three or four corners in a row for Bournemouth, but nothing came of them and now they're going forward again into the 90th minute Andrew Sermon finding Callum Wilson in the box but he doesn't go for the shot he tries to control it rather fortuitously for us uh, uh, David Marshall is there not Adam Marshall I was about to say Adam Marshall David Marshall is there to collect and he holds the ball in his hands until the referee blows the final whistle and we have won the game our, our loss streak is over our three game loss streak is done we have ended that streak with a win here against Bournemouth at the KC Stadium Leon Bailey gets man of the match after a goal and an assist for him. Uh, Abel Hernandez as well doing a very uh, very good job there in the game as well. 8.4 for him obviously. He got the ball rolling when it came to goals in that one. So a very good result there against Bournemouth who actually beat us of course in the reverse fixture. You can see the background there was just training for a moment. It was actually because I accidentally played uh, the training drill with Marvin Stefaniak for dribbling. We did actually manage to get an A in it first attempt which was pretty damn decent. Um, and now you can see the rest of the training slots there as well. Uh, Stefaniak, Valkvist and Ndidi being trained at the moment seeming to be the most promising of the young players that we have in the squad at this time. Uh, you can see some transfer activity now. Toulouse actually rejected our £1 million plus Dawson bid for Issa Diop saying they wanted far more than that. We've offered £2.5 million. You can see in the background there that Hen and Vino have accepted our new and revised offer for Jeremiah Saint-Just of £2.1 million plus Michael Dawson. However, Freiburg rejected our bid for Mark Oliver Kempf. And I can also confirm that Toulouse rejected our latest bid for Issa Diop. And to be honest with you, I don't want to be spending much more than £2.5 million pounds plus Michael Dawson on a new centre back so we're just going to go I have to go ahead and get Jeremiah Sanjus the problem with this transfer window is we're stretched for funds far more than we were in the last transfer window we could basically go and get who we want almost it wanted almost in the last transfer window whereas we're having to be very very cautious with the amount that we're spending so we made a contract bid there for Jeremiah Sanjus and now we're looking at a goalkeeper I did a poll about five episodes ago and you guys said that goalkeeper and centre back was the position that I needed to strengthen the most. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and listen to that. We're going to go ahead and get a goalkeeper. The first of the players is Johan Cardinal of OGC Nice. Now, this guy's an interesting one. He's 75 overall and he's got 83 potential. And we could possibly get him for... They wanted... They only wanted, like, 5 million. Because, uh, obviously, they, the inquiry was 6.5 million. But that would mean they'd probably accept a bit of 5 million pounds. Now, to say he's that good, that is a pretty decent... You know, that's a pretty decently cheap uh, amount. That's because his contract is expiring. It's the same, actually, with Timon Vallenreuter, who we were also having a look at making some bids, uh, looking for some exchange uh, deals as well, with David Marshall going in the opposite direction. OGC Nice, though, actually decided to reject our bid for Johan Cardinal of £1 million plus Marshall. They said they weren't interested in the player. So we're going to have to go ahead and make a new bid of £4 million plus Eldin Jakubovic. Actually, no, £3.5 million is what I went for, or £3 million. I changed my mind a lot, as, as you can tell. Yeah, £3.5 million is what we went for, plus Jakubovic, who we're also not really using at the moment, and see whether OGC Nice went ahead and accepted that, and we'll see in a moment as to whether we will be getting a new goalkeeper or whether any of those bids will be accepted. In the meantime, you can see we've got a bid here for one of our own players at the moment. This is Ahmed El Mahamadi, who's getting a bid coming in from Freiburg. Obviously, the team that have Mark Oliver Kempf, who we were actually interested in at one stage, uh, but unfortunately, Freiburg wanting a little bit too much for him, and we can get Jeremiah Sanjust for a little bit cheaper, and they're both of a very similar rating and potential. Uh, we're countering a £3 million bid there for El Mahamadi, who's not featured in a very long time. Time. Uh, we offered, we we asked for 3.75 million, and Freiburg came back the stingy side that they are. Uh, they were not willing to pay the extra 50k uh, that went on the end of that, so they came back with a bit of 3.7. Uh, we're going to go ahead and accept that, and I do apologise because I realise El mohammed has been at Hull or associated with Hull for quite some time, but I feel as if it's just unfair to just have him in the reserves constantly. He hasn't featured in a while. Odubajo is our 
our most pre uh, preferred right back right now, and Valkvist will, uh, will be our most prefer uh, preferred right back in like a season from now. So El Mohamedi doesn't have a sniff, he's only going to decline, he doesn't have a chance really to have any sort of main role in the squad, and I just feel as if it's unfair to just have him wasting away on the reserves. So we are going to sell him to Freiburg, and El Mohamedi will be moving on unfortunately. Uh, now though it is time for the second and final game of today's episode, obviously only two games in this episode because we've got a lot of transfer activity, and uh, you saw the squad there briefly of Chelsea, uh, they, I mean, we beat them 4-1 earlier in the season, I don't know if they've really learned their, their, their lesson, I don't know if Conte's really set them up to, uh, to have any sort of different result because they've got a fairly weak side in comparison to the usual Chelsea side going into this game, so we'll have to try and take advantage of that, Ryan Mason there with the first chance of the game, but he puts the long shot just over the bar in the 10th minute of the game, no Courtois though in this one, so Begovic will be hoping to impress. Into the 14th minute, lovely through ball there from Ndidi to find Marvin Stefaniak here. Down the left-hand side, he's gone past Branislav Ivanovic. Lovely step over to cut inside, and he scored a wonderful solo goal. It is that man again, Marvin Stefaniak. He's in search for the whole fans. He can't find him, bless him. But he's found the back of the net with a wonderful solo goal. Uh, Begovic actually gets a hand to it, but I just love this kid. Marvin Stefaniak. He just takes people on. He's such an exciting player, dribbling past players, making things happen, and he's done so again. He's doing his defensive duties as, as well there, winning the ball back off Willian, and now he can set up a counter-attack. A bit of a miscontrol there from Nemanja Matic has allowed Vincent Cozielo to take the ball away, and he's now dribbling past players like it's absolutely nobody's business. Goes past one, loses the ball to Willian, but his tenacity gets the ball back here. Does Vincent Cozielo going down the left-hand side. He's got away from uh, Willian, puts the ball into the box and the volley. Frabel Hernandez, great save from Begovic. What a goal that would have been coming off the work of some defensive play. A lovely counter-attack there. Leon Bailey going for a shot now as well in the 30th minute. And we are utterly dominating this game at the moment, much like we did in the reverse fixture. Now Ryan Mason's going forward as well, right on the edge of half-time. Can we finally get a second goal just before half-time? Leon Bailey with the strike again, but it's a more simple save this time for Begovic, who certainly got the better of the Jamaican winger at the moment. Stefaniak, though, into the second half, is tearing Branislav Ivanovic apart into the centre now, trying to find Kozielo. Lovely one-two between them, but uh, Stefaniak there with the shot, but a good save from Begovic. It was sort of right at him in the end, but we're all over Chelsea right now, Stefaniak making another chance happen here, Leon Bailey again going to go for a shot, that's his third big opportunity of the game, and again, Begovic comes out on top against the young Jamaican winger, into uh, the final sort of half an hour of the game, Chelsea finally get their first shot of the game, and it's a very tame header there from Diego Costa, Chelsea have just been absolutely appalling so far in this game, our passing play though has been brilliant, Diamande off the bench, forcing yet another worldy save here, from Asmir Begovic who's keeping Chelsea in the game, into the 81st minute, a rather tired-looking Stefaniak is finally coming off. One of the gr one of the best performances, really, of this series so far from the youngster. He is often replaced by Snodgrass. Into the last minute of the game, the 90th minute, Chelsea finally pushing forward. Michael Keane, though, wins the ball off Eden Hazard. He's been solid at the back. A very solid performance defensively overall. We keep hold of the clean sheet, limiting Chelsea to just one shot in the entire game. And we take probably the most dominant 1-0 victory you will ever see. Andrew Robertson, rather under the radar, gets man of the match. 8.9 rating for him. Good ratings as well for Ndidi, Stefaniak, and also Ryan Mason. They're getting a 7.9 rating. In the meantime, though, back towards training, and we can see that we're still we're still training Ndidi, Valkvist, and Stefaniak. If we sign some more young players, then obviously this will change a little bit, but I don't really see the point in training anyone else at the moment. These are three guys that I want to be big fixtures in this series at some point. Uh, big fixtures of the side, so it, it only really makes sense to be, uh, to be, uh, to be training them. Uh, but uh, talking of young players, we're going to be signing one right now now, Jeremiah Sanjus has accepted that contract offer that we gave him earlier. I think it was 10k in wages. Squad rotation player as a player role. Michael Dawson goes in the opposite direction. Again, I apologise that we're getting rid of Hull Originals, but Dawson has been really poor. He's only going to decline. He's only going to get worse. And now we've got a centre-back who's going to improve. He's welcome to the Tigers. Jeremiah Sanjus is now a Hull player. You can see his attributes. He's only going to get better, whereas Dawson was on the slippery slope downwards and was playing badly. We'll have to see whether this guy can step up to the mark. At the moment, Curtis Davies and Michael Keane look shoo-ins, really, into the starting 11. Been playing very, very well recently, so this guy will have to do a very good job to get into the side. Uh, Sanjus has been, he's someone that's been known for a while, realistically. He's not an under-the-radar signing, necessarily. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to claim to be the first person to ever sign Sanjus, but it was someone that was suggested in the comment section quite a lot, so I, I just thought I might as well listen to you guys. You guys clearly wanted him, so he has been signed for the club. Moving on
on to the goalkeepers though, we had a look there at Velen Reuter and also Cardinal. Four and a half million pound bid. Uh, OGC Nice weren't actually interested in Jakubovic either. Uh, so we're going to have to make a flatline money bid and hope that we can sell Marshall on and Jakubovic as well for the same sort of price. Also making a bid for Timon Velen Reuter of 1.5 million plus uh, David Marshall. You guys can vote for which goalkeeper I sign in the top right of the screen. So you can also you can be voting for two things uh, in this episode. Which goalkeeper we sign obviously being uh, the first one and then obviously the, the poll that you heard earlier about Andrew Robertson and whether we should cash in on him. Uh, a result from the poll last week as well that I forgot to mention uh, you guys said that I shouldn't be counter offering for Vincent Cozielo whatsoever. Uh, so Vincent Cozielo will not be going anywhere in this transfer window do not worry about that. That's why that's not really featured in this episode so far. Cozielo will not be having any counter offers going in the opposite direction therefore he will not be leaving the club for any sort of price. That should be fine but once again don't forget to vote in the polls in the top right of the screen. Uh, you'll have seen that we're joint top of the Barclays Premier League at the moment, or the EPL, sorry, not the BPL, it's not Barclays anymore. We're joint top of the EPL somehow. Uh, I think I might have to turn the sliders to more aggressive status um, in, in coming episodes. We'll do that once we're out of the transfer window. And now you can see the Hall of Fame, uh, the Hall of Fame, even in the background, you'll have seen that for quite some time. To take it in, to gather the stats, obviously Abel Hernandez will still be the top scorer, and I'm fairly sure nothing else has actually changed. That, though, is about it from me for this episode of Hull City Career Mode here on FIFA 17. If you have enjoyed the video, then feel free to hit the likes button, subscribe if you're new to the channel as well, and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. Don't forget to vote in the two polls at the top of the screen, but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. No, that's not me. Act like a waste man, that's